I'm Dana Denha, and you're watching FYI. When handling firearms, safety precautions are a must, and one local organization hosts weekly trap shoots for any interested individual to learn how to shoot under the guidance of people seasoned at the sport. Since 1939, the Tri-County Sportsman's League has been a place for the hunter-gatherer in all of us. Here at the club, we're situated on over 57 acres, and we have uh, an archery field, a long range, an extended range rifle range. We have a pistol house. Uh, we also have two trap fields, and we've got 20-some acres to the south of us in the back where uh, we use for overnight camping, like the Boy Scout day camps and things of that nature. Every Sunday, the league opens their trap shooting range for any interested individual. One of the hardest sports there is because most gun sports are not shooting at a moving target, target where here you are. With moving targets, every shot is different and it seems to be a lot more fun. Also, when you hit one of the targets, they, they burst, they kind of explode, so that's kind of an instant sign that you hit the target. It's launched from a trap machine at about 57 to 60 miles an hour. Uh, you're standing 16 yards behind where it comes out, so when you shoot, you're probably shooting at about 30 yards if you're on it quick. The clay pigeon is biodegradable. Most of us use a 12-gauge shotgun. It can be a single barrel, a double barrel, a semi-automatic, pump action, bolt action, as long as it can fire a single shotgun shell. It's its own sport, it's sanctioned. I believe there was over 30,000 students, high school students in it last year alone. It's one of the safest sports. In the 30,000 kids that have been shooting for the last five years, we have not had one accident anywhere in the United States. And you can't say that about football, basketball, soccer, track, any of that stuff. It doesn't matter if you're short, tall, skinny, fat, whatever, anybody can shoot this sport. And physical size or limitations have nothing to do with your ability to do this, so it's open for everybody. Everybody's on equal grounds. Stay tuned and we'll be back in exactly 30 seconds. It's camp season and there are so many to choose from, but one company is bringing the stage to life as students learn singing, dancing, and acting, the Triple Threat. Dancer's Edge and Dexter builds confidence during musical theater camp. We start from the very, very basic beginning. We pick songs, we learn how to read music, we learn uh, choreography and blocking. They make their own costumes, they make their own backdrops. If we have sets, they make their own sets and then we perform at the end of the week. Standing up in front of, on a stage is hard, especially in front of an audience. And they're so young, and starting them that young is so good for confidence because as they grow, they won't be nervous to go and talk to people or talk in front of a big group or anything like that. The students performed Susical the Musical at the end of this five-day camp. They want to feel challenged. They want to feel like they've conquered something when they get to the end of this week and they perform. So Susical was interesting to sell to them though because I said, you're going to be jungle animals and you're going to be fish. And half of them were like, I don't want to be a fish. <laughs> But now, as it's gone through the week and they've started to own those characters, they've come in and they're like, I'm a lion, or I'm going to do this, and this is what I'm going to wear, and this is how I'm going to act, and this is how I'm going to move. We have an entire scene between two kids that are under the age of eight, and they rock it. They're doing, like, susical rhymes with words that don't exist and all sorts of these big words, and it's just fantastic that they can do that. Kids who participate in the arts grow up to be confident adults who know how to communicate. Kids who can act and get on stage and do any of these things, they can do anything with their lives. If you find someone who wants to be a CEO and they had an acting background, 
They can hold eye contact, they can convey a thought, they can persuade people with how they're acting, and all of that comes from all these skills they learn as children. We all love good eats on the grill and a warm campfire, but before you ignite those flames, there's some need to know safety info. Learn more in this month's City Roundup in 60. Hi, my name is Mike Kennedy. I'm the fire chief for the Ann Arbor Fire Department. Here today to talk about fire safety. We have a lot of information on the city website, a2gov.org slash fire for both grilling safety along with outdoor fireplace safety. For grilling safety, we recommend keeping grills at least 10 feet away from a structure. If you have hot coals, never throw them into the trash. That can cause a fire. And for outdoor fire safety, you can't have campfires in the city of Ann Arbor. They have to be 25 feet from a structure. You are also allowed to have portable fireplaces. Those have to be 15 feet from a structure. You need to make sure that they're attended at all times and they're completely extinguished before you leave. There's some additional guidance and requirements uh, that are available on the city website. Please go there, check it out. If you have any other questions, please let us know. We're happy to answer. Downtown Ann Arbor just got a little more whimsy with the opening of Rocket Fizz, a retro candy and soda pop shop. Rocket Fizz boasts over 1,500 varieties of candy to satisfy any sweet tooth, even the most adventurous of eaters, while also pouring over 500 kinds of soda pop. Joining me is owner of Rocket Fizz, Tom Homer. Welcome to the show, Tom. So uh, tell me a little bit about you and uh, your wife, right? You and your wife own a couple Rocket Fizz stores, right? You correct, correct. So Rocket Fizz is a franchise, which kind of surprises people because it really doesn't present itself like a franchise concept. Um, we went into one when we were on vacation in Lake Tahoe. Um, didn't, you know, we didn't rush right home and say, hey, we have to do this, but just kind of put it in the back of our mind. Um, we decided to open up uh, one in our hometown of, of Kalamazoo. Um, and it was very, very well received. We had an amazing opening in Kalamazoo. Uh, about a year later, we opened up our Traverse City location. And, and that one's doing wonderfully as well. And we were planning on, in 2020, opening up an Ann Arbor location. Uh, of course, that didn't pan out. So here we are in 2021, fulfilling, fulfilling the third leg of our dream here. And we are so excited to be in Ann Arbor. It's just the energy in that town is just incredible. I've never really talked to someone that owned franchises before. What are the, what are the difficulties in, let's say, opening up multiple franchises like this where, you know, you don't live in Ann Arbor, you know, so you have to drive to Ann Arbor. How do you sort of like take care of three stores at the same time? Um, so Ann Arbor will have a manager. Um, his name is Ryan. It's a great story. Ryan's the first person we hired for Kalamazoo. Um, so he's been with us the entire time and he's ready to take, take the big step and he's going to manage our Ann Arbor store. He's going to be moving out that way. Um, and, you know, I have a background in automotive. I was a district manager for an automotive company for, for a number of years. So, you know, managing remotely is something that I've been accustomed to, um, but it presents its challenges, uh, you know, and being a franchise, you know, that has uh, it's a different cost structure. A lot of people don't understand. I think franchise, well, they must have a lot of money. It's like, no, it just it, they, they, they take care of a lot of the issues for us that if we were independent, that like particularly as we look through COVID, um, we lost one of our major suppliers during COVID. They had another one lined up within weeks and, and we were, you know, didn't miss a beat. So um, that, that's a big advantage. Tell us a little bit about Rocket Fizz. You know, you said you went to Lake Tahoe, you ran into one of these franchise stores and it just sort of like was an earworm. It just kept sort of showing up for you. Yeah. You know, you were thinking about so, it. I think most people will call it a candy store. Um, you know, obviously here I am. Um, <laughs> not fully in focus. There we go. There you go. Um, <laughs> So most people kind of refer to it as a candy store, which, which in fact it is, um, but I think it does it a disservice to call it just a candy store. Um, so we have roughly about 1,500 varieties of packaged candies uh, that we sell. That'll be anything from the common stuff that people expect a candy store to have. You got to have Skittles and Snickers and Kit Kats. Um, but we also have nostalgic stuff that people thought disappeared. Candy cigarettes, candy necklaces, candy buttons, bun bars, things like that. Um, and we also just kind of have some of the weird stuff that we bring in, flavored crickets, flavored worms, uh, scorpion suckers, things like that. Uh, and then a large amount of imported stuff. So we have, we have a whole cart that's just European imported stuff. 
Uh, we have a whole cart that's all Asian imported stuff. So um, kind of tastes from around the world. Um, on top of that, we have a, a bulk bin that we have uh, over a hundred varieties of saltwater taffy and bulk candies. Uh, saltwater taffy is phenomenal. I was not a saltwater taffy eater coming into this thing, but the company we've paired with, they're phenomenal. Um, just flavorful and just amazing, amazing flavors. Um, so then on top of that, the thing that usually kind of catches everyone's attention is the fact we have roughly about 550 varieties of glass bottled soda pop available in our store. Um, some of it's made by us. Some of it's Rocket Fizz branded stuff. Um, it's going to be some weird stuff. We're going to have our pickle soda, our ranch dressing soda, mustard soda. It's the one everyone always talks about. Um, but then we also have a, a large variety of craft sodas. So there's a whole craft industry around soda pop, just like there is beer. So we have, you know, um, you know, here, here in Michigan, we're all familiar with Fago. Well, you go also around the country, they have somebody else. So like in St. Louis, it'd be Fitz's. In Philadelphia, it's Hank's. So we have all these varieties. On top of that, we sell tin signs, concert posters, gag gifts, toys, stuffed animals, cardboard cutouts, uh, rubber masks. Um, it's just really, uh, we try to put a lot of whimsy into one spot and just to allow people just to kind of um, just kind of take a break from, from the hustle and bustle of life. As, as we were saying last year, we were a 20 minute vacation from 2020. Yeah, it's really sort of like a touristy thing, but it's like in our, our own town. I'm so I'm honestly so excited to go to this store. I love this kind of stuff. I love candy. I'm like a big candy person. I'm like the first person that like if you see a new candy out, I'm like, I got to try it. I need to know if it's right. good or not sort of thing. Like I just really like trying different candies and stuff. But you know what? This is like such a Michigander thing. And I'm going to bring it up because it's like I can't handle it. Does it bug you that you have to call it soda? Because like my daughter will call pop soda and I'm like, it's pop. We live in Michigan. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, that's an ongoing thing. And this is, this is how I settled. <laughs> if it's in a can or if it's in a plastic bottle, it's pop. If it's in a glass bottle, it's soda pop. <laughs> I'll go with it because you're still we'll giving pop it. its Use reputation. Pop needs to be in there. All right. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it's funny, my, my wife is, is a Michigander born and raised and she's always called it soda. So I, I, I don't think it's a it's a hard line, whatever that it's line. It's sort of for me, but it's interesting because I work with someone that's from like New Hampshire and he calls everything Coke. It's all mm -hmm. Coke. And I'm like, yeah. that's so weird. What if you want a Sprite? Do you have to say I want a Coke Sprite? I don't understand it. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> Coke, too. I mean, it's it's the home of Coke everywhere. Everything is Coke down there. I, so, I find it very interesting. So you're like right in the midst of it now. You have a shop <laughs> that you could really talk to people about this kind of stuff. And I'm sure, like I said, it is sort of a tourist destination where you'll get people that aren't necessarily from Ann Arbor or from Kalamazoo that are just like mm -hmm. in town. And they're like, wow, look, look at this cool Rocket Fizz place. Let's check right. it out. Yeah, and it's uh, and it's kind of neat because it's uh, you know, we see such a wonderful mix of tourists, but then we just really we start to grow our regular fan base in town, um, and then it just becomes it, it just becomes a nice little network of people that that we we know when they walk in, they're they're here regularly, and we get to have a lot of fun with them. So. Do you have any like favorite items that you get, you know, when you came probably before you became a franchise owner, you probably just perused the store and you didn't see everything that the store had to offer, but you the know, store probably believe it or from the looks of it, the store offers a lot, a lot of things. So it, it's funny because I can't, I walked in and uh, I was on a mission to find an O Henry bar. That was my thing. I wanted Henry, yeah. 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 And uh, they didn't have it. Cause it wasn't, it's, it's not being made in the U S anymore. Henry you can get it in Canada. So we order him in from Canada now. Um, so he didn't have it, but you know, I was just kind of on a candy hunt and we got back in the car and, and uh, I, I forget who it was. Somebody else we were with, goes, they had a lot of pop in there. And I said, they had pop in there. I didn't even notice. <laughs> and it's everywhere. And I, I look back and I go, how, Oh my God, how much of tunnel vision did I have to have to not see all the pop in the store? <laughs> I think I would have candy vision as well because I'm more of a candy person than a pop person. So I would right. be like, what kind of candies you like? I love that you mentioned because this is something I always talk about. I remember going to Perry's, which is my corner store when I was a kid, and mm -hmm. we would get candy cigarettes all the time. And there'd be mm -hmm. two options there'd be the gum ones, and then there'd be like the chalk sort of ones. Mm -hmm. And you can't buy, you could never just go to a corner store now. Like you couldn't go to like a gas station or a CVS or something like that and buy a pack of candy cigarettes just were you the, the thick person or did you like the bubble gum better 
I think I like the bubble gum better, honestly. Do that little powdered sugar puff you can get out of it. Yeah, I think it's, I, I kind of thought it was cool. When the store is open, I need to just go look and see what is that candy that I'm like really missing that I'm just not even like thinking about. You know, when I, sometimes I'm like, yeah, whatchamacallits are really good, but you can still find those. They're not like mm-hmm. impossible to find. Right. I was yeah. actually, I, there's a Belgian candy I love and I can't find it anywhere around here, but I think it does exist in Michigan. It's called Cote d'Or. It's got like a little elephant on it. And it's a red package. Do you know if you have it? C-O-T-E? C-O-T-E, yes. I think we've had it in the past. I'm not positive. Don't hold me to that, but I think we've had yeah, it. See, this is the interesting thing because you guys have so much product. So it could really, that's why I'm talking about, it could be for anyone you talk about gross stuff like bugs and stuff like mm-hmm. that which you know there's a screech powers in every group to eat something like that from say right. you know right. there's something there really is something for everyone and I like this idea because I am such a candy creeper that uh I could go around and find candies in your store that I wouldn't be able to get anywhere right. else you know you have like European candies and Asian mm-hmm. candies and stuff like and those actually it tastes so different and it's like a nice way to explore uh different countries it is. And, and I think too, you know, on the nostalgic end of thing, like I don't like butterscotch flavored, but those little butterscotch discs, I will stick one in my mouth on a regular basis. Cause it reminds me of my grandmother. That's what she had in her purse. Right. Yeah. When I was, so the memory is so strong. I'm not there for the flavor. I'm there for the memory. I agree. And, I have the same thing. My grandma always had those strawberry candies with the little oh, uh, filling. <laughs> and so I go to the dollar tree and I buy those because they remind <laughs> me of my grandmother. Right, right. Don't you love that candy brings memories to you? Like you think about these people that you're no longer in your life and they like, you put pop a piece of candy in your mouth and they're, they're with you again in some way, you know? Mm-hmm. It's really yeah. just a beautiful, like this thing that you don't expect from candy. And it's kind of neat too, because we see it often where parents will, will discover us without the kids and then bring the kids back and then direct them to all the candies they had when they were kids. And it was, it's kind of fun to watch that kind of generational handoff of, of, you know, whatever it might be, might be the little wax bottles or whatever the case may be um, to just watch that kind of bonding going on over, over the candy, you know, for us, you know, um, just the joy of that, of, of the kids coming in and the parents sharing in that moment and, um, you know, like I said earlier, I was in the automotive industry. Everybody's angry in the automotive industry. Uh, I now work at, I work at a place now where everyone's happy all the time. And it's, it's a pretty amazing thing. You're Willy Wonka now. I mean, how right. awesome. Who gets to say they get to grow up to be Willy Wonka, right? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, talk about this Ann Arbor store because it's opening up really soon. Where's it located? When can we visit? Yep. Okay. So we're in 306 South Main, which is right next to the Ark. Um, it used to be an art gallery there before. So you, got um, prime, a, you have a prime location in Ann Arbor. Yeah. And well, I'll tell you, when we when I first came to Ann Arbor to kind of, you know, kind of ascertain whether or not um, it was a viable place for us to put one, I literally parked across the street from the location. I didn't even leave my car. I, I called up Heather and I'm like, ah, this one's a no brainer. We need to be here. Uh, I'm going to get out, walk around a little bit, but I'm telling you right now, this is where it's at. It's kind of funny that we got a space right there. Um and uh, we're looking to open. It's probably going to be about August 4th-ish. Um, you know, I kind of um, want to kind of put an ish on that just because freight right now is not, not the most reliable thing. So we might not get the product like we're supposed to in a time frame that we need to, to have a hard opening date. Um, but if all goes according to schedule, we're looking more than likely August 4th. Can we go on, you know, I, when I look at the Rocket Fizz website, it's sort of like the franchising website. Does it give you updates on your specific location opening and that sort of information? Uh, they'll, they'll announce when it officially opens. Uh, best bet is to follow us on, on Facebook, would be, which would be uh, at Rocket Fizz Ann Arbor on Facebook or okay. Rocket, Rocket Fizz AA on Instagram. Perfect. Uh, yeah. So that's a good way to really stay in the know of our location when it's going to be opening. You're planning on at some point in the fall, a grand opening for the store? Yeah, we'll do something. Um, we, we, we're not sure. It really depends um, on how busy things are. And unfortunately, when things are really busy, it's hard to do a grand opening. Um, we have that problem in Traverse, trying to do it in the summertime with all the tourists up there, you know. So, um, you know, the grand opening is really about the community and not about the tourism. So we may we may try to maybe push it to the fall where we can just really kind of just enjoy our Ann Arbor community a little more uh, than, you know, to give away a bunch of free stuff to people that are going to leave town. Uh, it just doesn't make sense. And you know, <laughs> so. it's not a bad problem to have to be too busy to have a grand opening, right? Right, right. <laughs> I'm, 
what I'm hoping that would be. <laughs> you know, I, first of all, everything about this store sounds so awesome. You're in a great location. It's mm -hmm. Main Street's where everyone walks in downtown Ann Arbor. So you're going to get so much foot traffic in that store. I can't imagine the store is not going to be on Main Street for the next decades to come. I hope for you and your family in mm -hmm. the city of Ann Arbor, because honestly, when I'm going to downtown Ann Arbor and I'm like, walking around and stuff. That's the kind of store I'm looking for. I want something that I'm not going to find in, you know, a strip mall. I want something that I'm really only going to see in the downtown. Right. Right. And especially, you know, if you have little, if you have littler ones, um, I do when she's dying um, to come too. bringing, bringing, bringing them downtown shopping can be an agonizing experience for them. So, you know, if anything, you know, we, we can serve as that bribe. Um, for the yeah. Kids. Here's your candy. Now let's go keep shopping. <laughs> uh, Exactly. And, you know, and I think, you know, bringing, bringing some family, family, family friendly things to downtown is always helpful as well. I think it, um, you know, any, anything that I, that I feel can add to, um, add to the, the, uh, I'm losing the word here, vibrance of downtown is, is a good thing. Well, the other thing about these Rocket Fizz stores is that they bring this sort of idea of like a simpler time back to life. You know, you go sit down at the counter, you drink a pop, you know, you have mm -hmm. a little candy, you hang out with your mom and dad or your good friends. Right. And this is like something that I would like, I really like this idea coming back again. I like this idea of just sitting around and hanging out with these really just wholesome, this like wholesome idea of uh, life. Right, right. And, you know, and it's really we try to we try to bring the experience on, on every level that we can. So um, I curate the music specifically for the store. Um, I'm constantly it's, it's you know, it's, it's a feed. So I got to constantly kind of nudge it and nurture it. But um, I really have a certain sound I want to hear in those in the store. And it's it's usually kind of a rockabilly doo wop Motown kind of vibe. Um, you know, something like you'd hear in a Quentin Tarantino film kind of thing. You yeah, know? nice. nice. I want to and um you know just really you know taking our staff and turning them into experts you know so when people come in we, there's a level of expertise on, i mean it's a strange thing to be an expert on i'm an expert on packaged candy and bottled soda pop but here i am uh, <laughs> really it, i think the fun fun for me is when somebody comes back and they're like hey last time i was here you recommended x what can you recommend today you know it's me that's the greatest honor you can pay me that means that i i gave you a good suggestion you came back looking for me to, to do it again so um, that's, that's a lot of fun, but yeah, having, having a good team that's really engages the people. That's such a big part of what we do. We're, we're an experience, you know, so our team you has guys to try to try all of your, you know, like you have like that weird stuff. I like give you a ranch dressing <laughs> pop and stuff. You try that stuff. Yeah, we do. So like, I'm, I'm about 400 plus soda varieties in at this point. Um, but it doesn't mean I'm drinking a whole bottle. It's, it's typically, oh, no. I mean, not every flavor is for everyone, right? No. And, and, and typically, you know, when we're together in a group and somebody buys a, buys a pop, we'll have little plastic shot glasses and we'll kind of, have you tried this one yet? Nope. Okay. Now you can try it. And so we all get to try it that way. Same thing when we open a candy. Um, so we want to, we want to really encourage people to try as many as they can so that when customers come in, um, you know, I'm, I'm like the resident root beer expert in, in the Kalamazoo store. So I have to, I, you know, I usually feel those. And then, you know, my wife is the ginger ale because I'm, I'm just not big on ginger ale. It's not my thing. Yeah. So, you got your own taste buds. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, um, you know, it's kind of fun. The team kind of segregates in those little areas and kind of because they, they become kind of the masters of that domain. Um, and so when a customer does come in, you know, we have good, you know, a, a, a good feel for, for the products we're selling and what's, what's going to be best to recommend to them. Well, before we go, when the Ann Arbor stores doors open and you're taking customers, why should people head out and check it out? Locals, tourists, anyone, why should they come check out Rocket Fizz in downtown Ann Arbor? I, I think the nostalgia is just, it's just a big pull for a lot of people. I, I think, uh, you know, we've had, a, we've had a rough year and a half, you know, as a society. And I think, uh, People, people want that little taste of, of, of their, of their childhood, of their past, just to kind of, you know, just that little, little dabble in it. Um, and, and, I, and honestly, it's just, a, it's just a fun way to kill 20 minutes, really. You know, you kill 20, come in for 15, 20 minutes, maybe pick up a few things, you know, sing, sing along to the music. You might catch some of the team dancing. I don't know if I've got dancers on this team or not. I know my other teams, I've got a lot of dancers randomly. <laughs> Um, but you know, it's just, it's a fun place. It's, and, and really that's, that's what we want to do. We want to, we want to create a fun environment for people to come and just enjoy themselves. All right. Well, thank you so much for taking the time, Tom. Absolutely. Thank you for having me.
For more on this and other programs, visit a2gov.org slash ctn. Visit youtube.com slash ctn Ann Arbor. See all that we have to offer. And remember to like, subscribe, and ring that notification. Thanks for watching and tune in next time to FYI. Mm -hmm.